Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. A lot of things going on right now in the market. Throne of Eldraine previews were occurring over the last week. We also saw some the week before as well. As you can imagine, some of these new card reveals have influenced prices on the secondary market of existing cards. You'll notice that as we go through today's video. Also, recently there's been big changes to the modern format. The metagame is still shifting. Players are trying to figure out which cards are the best, and cards are settling into different price points. Plus, there's a whole lot of other influencers that are moving hard prices that we'll discuss as we go through. Quickly, before we get started, though, if you're still looking to pre-order a box of Throne of Eldraine, you can do so at FlipSideGaming.com. If you use that hero's promo code, you can save some money and support the channel at the same time. That is always appreciated. But without any further ado, let's get into it. We'll begin, as we always do, with the top five standard legal cards that have lost value this week. I do have four honorable mentions, though, this week, so let's start off with our first one. It's Breeding Pool from Gatecrash, down 71 cents to 16.08. This is an older copy of the card. Of course, this is not rotating out of standard. It's going to stick around next season, and it's still going to see a ton of play, I'm sure. But the reason it's going down and it's a little softer right now is because the previous season, this was one of the key cards for so many important mana bases. Even recently, like Four Color Legends, that deck's been very popular. Before that, Bandscape Shift was extremely popular. In Modern, this sees a ton of play too, or Zathopter Sword, Infect, Neo, Brand, and more. I would expect this card to maybe settle down for the next few weeks, but then it could go back up again as the next standard season kicks off. Leyline of Anticipation is our second honorable mention. This is the one from Magic 2011. It goes down 80 cents to 10.99. This is a key card for Commander. Fantastic card in that format when you're in blue. And it does play well with some of the new Commanders from Commander 2019. So it did get a bump recently. But you got to remember, this card just got reprinted in Core Set 2020. Because of that, this original copy still remains soft, even though there is a strong demand for it. Our third honorable mention is Omnith Locus of the Royal. It goes down 83 cents to 1331. This card started off last season in Standard relatively strong in some of the elemental builds, but as time went on, they kind of fell off, and now it sees a little bit of play, but not as much as it was seeing. All that could change, though, with the rotation coming. Next season, this will be in standard with a much smaller pool of cards. Perhaps elementals could have a comeback. Time will tell. But at least for right now, this card is a little bit soft. It does see some modern play. There's a five-color elemental deck that is not doing that bad in the format, but it typically only runs one copy of this. Last honorable mention, because, come on, he had to be here, right? Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, down 86 cents to 2286. And this card is going to rotate out of standard. Recently, it got a little bit of a push because of the unbanning of Stoneforge Mystic and Modern. Obviously, there was a good chance that the Azorius Control builds would adopt a Stoneforge package, making them a little bit better. So this card did jump up for just one week. Then it continued its decline down. Now, when it comes to Modern, so far so good. Stoneforge looks pretty good, and this card is definitely still showing up in those Control builds. So I do think there's always going to be an audience for this card. Don't expect it to bottom out in the next couple weeks or anything like that. But it is going to remain soft as you have a lot of these standard players that are going to try to cash this in for some equity so they can build their new decks for the next season. Frilled Sandwalla, this goes down 91 cents to 220. This is one of those Corset 2020 cards that you cannot find in booster packs. You can get one copy of this in the Green Welcome deck, which of course is the deck that they give out to new players at game stores for free. Because not a lot of people are breaking those up to sell them for parts online, there are a few people taking advantage of that. Putting these up at high prices, don't pay over $2 for a frilled sandwalla. There's my public service announcement for the week. Number four, Watery Grave. This is the original one from Ravnica City of Guilds. It goes down $1.09 to $21.56. This had a jump recently because towards the end of this past standard season, that Kethis combo deck just caught on, and this is part of that mana base. So now with everything moving forward, we're getting closer to rotation. This just retracts back a little bit. Still a key card that's going to see play in standard mana bases, no doubt, next season. And of course, this does see a lot of modern play, too. Or Zathopter Sword, Grixis Shadow are two really big decks right now that both use this in the mana base. Plus, it's in many more. Number three, Escape Shift. Magic 2019 down 68 cents to 1632. Morning Tide goes down $1.45 to 1873. This had a good standard season, obviously, in that Bandscape Shift deck and other variations on it. But, alas, it is time for this card to rotate out. Because of that, it is soft right now. And even though it is rotating, 
still sees modern play. Titan Shift, Bring to Light Scape Shift, and other variations on that type of deck have always been good in modern. Number two, Arclight Phoenix. Wow, this is a card that is going down and will probably continue to go down at a pretty nice clip, even though it is not rotating out of standard. It goes down 217 to 1370 this week. So a few things you need to know about this card if you're thinking of picking one up. First off, the Arcane Temple Challenger deck was a thing that happened. This card was in that product, so that means more copies of it got pushed out into the marketplace, so it's a little easier to find than your average Mythic Rare from Guilds of Ravnica. Aside from that, recently with the banning of Faithless Looting and Modern, this card is just going to have a hard time doing a whole lot there. Has not really recovered from that yet. Maybe at some point someone will figure out a new way to adjust that build. But as of right now, the card feels almost dead there. Sees a little legacy play still. There's a John Phoenix deck that can do well every once in a while. But really, that's not enough to hold the price point where it is right now. Standard, it didn't have a very good season there either because of the shifting meta. And next season, the outlook isn't very good. We saw a preview card this week, as a matter of fact, Deafening Silence. This really continues to put pressure on that card in the format. Because of that, I think this card stands to lose a lot more value unless something drastic does happen. Number one, Leyline of the Void with three copies, yet again going down in value. Guild Pack down 92 cents to 33.95. Magic 2020 down $1.67 to 13.63. Magic 2011 down 234 to 22.24. Now here's a card that down the road, once we get to Theros and the whole underworld theme, maybe becomes more important in standard, so keep that in mind. But in the meantime, this does stand to lose more value. Still a good cyborg card for Modern or Legacy. However, with the banning of Faithless Looting and Hogak, it's just not as critical as it was a few weeks ago. A lot of players were playing this in the main deck. It was so necessary back then. Now that the meta has shifted, I would expect this card to lose more value, especially since we just got a reprint in Corset 2020. Okay, let's move on to the top five standard legal cards that have gained value this week. But I do have three honorable mentions in this section. The first one is Villas Broker of Blood from Corset 2020. It goes up 47 cents to 450. I'm always impressed when cards from the newest standard set at rare can go up in value at this point, just because there's so many packs that have been opened. But this is a very good card for Commander right now, especially because of the Commander 2019 product. In particular, the Merciless Rage deck. Carrick, Son of Yawgmoth and this feel like they were meant to go together. It's a key card if you're going to build a Carrick deck in Commander. This is also a card people are picking up just as an upgrade for the Merciless Rage deck in general. Now, in Standard, I do think this has potential, maybe as a reanimation target in the future. Again, let's see what happens when we go to Theros and there's more of a graveyard focus, perhaps. Since, again, we will be visiting that Theros Underworld. Next honorable mention is Twilight Prophet going up 54 cents to 954. You know what's more impressive than a new Standard card at Rare going up in value? A card about to rotate out of Standard going up in value. Why is this happening? Again, it's because of Commander. And again, it is because of Carrick, Son of Yawgmoth. There's a lot of players picking this up to play in those builds. Our third honorable mention is Gideon's Company. It goes up 97 cents to 349. This is kind of a weird one because the only place to find it is in the Gideon the Oath Sworn more of the Spark Planeswalker deck. There's three copies in there, so it's not necessarily a rare card or anything like that. But this is a pretty decent card for Commander purposes if you wanted to play a life gain deck or even just for kitchen table magic generally. Because of that, there's a little bit of a demand on this card, and it goes up again this week. Number five is the Kama Primal Calamity. It goes up $1.01 to $15.82. This saw a little standard play last season out of the sideboard of Golos Nexus, but it's about to rotate out. Why is it going up this week? Again, it's because of Commander. In particular, there's a few different cards from Commander 2019 that have pushed this. Atlaplani Nest Tender. A lot of people are building around that card. It came out of the Primal Genesis deck but this is a good card to put in that build. Also, this plays very well with Sanctum of Eternity, which came out of the Merciless Rage deck, which we mentioned earlier. And in case you forgot, this is just a really good dinosaur commander generally. If you watched Commander Versus last week and the Star City Games YouTube channel, this was one of the featured decks. Number four is Assassin's Trophy, up $1.06 to sixteen ninety eight. This is not rotating out of standard, and it stands to reason in a narrower field of cards, this could see more play next season. Now, aside from that, though, I think the real reason this is climbing this much is because of the play it's seeing outside of Standard. Modern, it's in some big decks. Jund, Devoted Company, The Rock, just to name a few. Legacy, Depths Builds, Four Color Control. Very key removal card in those formats. 
Number three, it's another welcome deck card. Let's just get through it. Ironclad Crowvold. This is up at LRO7 to 290. You can find one copy in the white welcome deck for Magic 2020. Don't pay this price, though. Number two is Mox Amber, up $1.50 to $11.45. Okay, we know this has been good in those Kethys decks in Standard, but this is about to rotate out. Why is it going up in value? Actually, a couple of reasons. One is Modern. There is a Paradoxical Urza deck that put up some good results this week, and it runs four copies of this in the main. We'll have to keep an eye on that deck. But the other reason is because of a Throne of Eldraine preview. And that preview card was Emery Lurker of the Lock. Okay, if you take this, Mox Amber, Mox Opal, Mirian Spy, and Grinding Station... That's an infinite mill combo right there. Or if you want to go with infinite mana, just replace Grinding Station with Clark Clan Ironworks. Now, of course, that card is banned in modern, but I don't know if these are actually going to be modern combos. They're a little too complicated to pull off, I think, in that format. However, for commander or kitchen table purposes, there's people trying to pull these things together. And there's probably a percentage of these cards just being bought up by speculators because people are talking about these combos. So this is definitely a card to watch when it comes out in a few weeks. I do think it will have some kind of impact. Definitely in Commander. I think a lot of Commander players are going to be very interested in this. Number one, now you see why I did the honorable mentions. Another welcome deck card. You can get one copy of Bristling Boar in the Magic 2020 Green Welcome Deck. It goes up 306 this week to 474. Don't pay that. Okay, let's move on to Modern with the top five Modern legal cards that have lost value this week. Number five is Black Cleave Cliffs, down 288 to $46. This was a key part of the mana base in those Hogak decks. Because of the Hogak and Faithless Looting banning, this card is very soft right now. But with that being said, this is still a good modern card that shows up in a lot of other decks. If the price gets low enough, you might want to pull the trigger because I don't think it's going to stay down for long. Number four is Sword of Light and Shadow for Modern Masters. It goes down 389 to $60.99. So this card spiked tremendously once we found out that Stoneforge Mystic was becoming unbanned in the modern format. Now it's retracting a little bit, which isn't too surprising. But when you look at these Stoneforge Mystic packages that are doing well right now in modern, most of them aren't really running this card. Sometimes you see it. I have seen it show up in like a Death and Taxes, a Bant Midrange, and some other builds out there. But it seems like more people are playing Sword of Fire and Ice and or Batter Skull or Sword of Feast and Famine. Those are the three pieces of equipment that I see the most with Stoneforge right now. So this one does stand to lose more value. With that being said, though, this will always be a good commander card and it's always going to be in demand to some degree. Also sees a little bit of legacy play, too. Number three is Chalice of the Void from Mirrodin. It goes down 391 to 7172 this week. Still sees a ton of modern play. But it does look like now that the meta is shifting, the percentage of play is down a little bit on this card. Still shows up in some good decks, though. Tron builds, Eldrazi builds, Affinity, and more. Sees Legacy play, too. Mono Red Prison, Four Color Loam. Also a little bit of Vintage play, even though it is restricted there. I wouldn't expect it to lose a ton of value, but it could be soft for a few weeks, especially considering recently it was going up in value pretty aggressively. Number two, Jace the Mind Sculptor. This is the one from Masters 25. It goes down 453 to $136.02. Here's another card that went crazy when we found out Stoneforge Mystic was going to be unbanned in Modern. So, yes, these Jace the Mind Sculptors all jumped up really high. This is the easiest one to find right now in good condition, being the most recent for Masters 25. So it's the first one to retract at such a high rate. Not too surprising to see the retraction here. Now, with that being said, the card will not go back down to where it was before the big jump, I don't think. Because it's not only seeing play in Modern, and yes, sometimes with Stoneforge Mystic, but it also sees play in Legacy, Vintage, Commander, Oathbreaker, pretty much everywhere. Until they actually reprint this thing again, I would expect all of these copies to stay relatively high. I do think it will remain soft again for the next few weeks and try to find its new price point. But I wouldn't expect a big loss in value from this point. Number one is Godsire. It goes down $9.41 to $19. This card just blew up recently because of that Primal Genesis Commander 2019 deck. Perfect upgrade for that deck. And another card that a lot of people are just throwing into Outlet Plani Nest Tender Builds too. Now that everything's calmed down, people have moved on from Commander 2019 to Throne of Eldraine. This card retracts big time this week. It won't go back down to where it was before all this started, but it will lose some more value. Okay, on to the top five modern legal cards that have gained value this week. Number five is Knight Exemplar. Two copies here. Dual decks, Knights versus Dragons. Goes up 254 to 1093. Magic 2011, up 312 to 1138. Well, Throne of Eldraine is definitely bringing the Knights, and if you want to play a Knight Commander deck, 
no better time than the present, or at least I guess in a couple weeks. One of the key cards is actually in the Night Brawl deck called Knight's Charge. That's Sir Gwyn, Hero of Ashvale. So there's a lot of people already starting to put lists together, and Knight Exemplar is on most of those lists. Number four, Polluted Bonds, goes up 481 to 2499. These Shadowmore cards, I'll tell you, I'll get it out of the way quick. During this time period of Magic, these sets had a lower print run than many modern era Magic sets. Because of that, when there's a demand on these cards, they tend to spike. This one in particular has been hot because of Carrick, Son of Yawgmoth again. A lot of players are still putting that deck together, even a few weeks after the release of the Commander 2019 product. Hokun Strong Gold Scourge. Okay, this goes up 490 to 1387, and I bet you can't guess why. Yep, because of those Throne of Eldraine Knights again. Number two is Pillar of the Peruns, up 1009 to $30. This is a decent commander card, but the main reason it's going up this week is actually because of Modern. This is in the Rainbow Niv Mizzet deck, and this has been creeping up for a number of weeks now. It just missed this list about three or four times, actually. Well, this week, apparently, it did not want to miss the list with this huge spike. Rainbow Niv Mizzet is starting to look like maybe one of the better decks in this new Modern meta. Number one, Mox Opal. Wow, Scars of Meriden goes up 737 to 11735. Modern Masters 2015 up 1565 to $134.25. Okay, so I do think that $134 is really high. I would expect that to retract pretty quickly. The Scars of Meriden will probably retract too, but at least in the short term, they might kind of meet in the middle a little bit. With that being said, what is happening with this card? Well, I already mentioned that this is getting pushed a little bit because of Emery Lurker of the Lock and that combo that we discussed at the beginning of the video. But aside from that, this is just such a solid card. Modern Urzathopter Sword looks like it could be one of the better decks as well in that new meta. This is a key part of that deck. Also in Hardened Scales, Classic Affinity, Where Prison, that Chargetron deck, which is a little newer out there too. Legacy, you'll find this in Ad Nauseum Tendril Storm, Bomberman, Sees Vintage Play and Paradoxical Outcome. Another card that just shows up everywhere. Okay, on to our Vintage Spotlight. This is where we talk about cards that see playing Vintage, Legacy 9394 or cards that are just important to collectors. First off, we have a reserveless card, surprise, surprise, Tropical Island from Revised that goes up 1006 to 29406. This was a pretty big week for dual lands in general, Revised as well as Unlimited. You're gonna see more on the list later. Lady Evangela, spikes for the second week in a row, going up 2127 to $88. This is also on the reserve list. Again, this one just feels like a buyout. We talked about it last week. I do think you're going to see the price on this start to drop maybe by another week or two. Usually when people buy up cards like this, they buy them on credit and they try to sell them back when the price point gets pushed up higher. So I don't expect this to last, although I don't think the card's going to go back down to where it was prior to the spike. Phyrexian Dreadnought from Mirage. It goes up $22.96 this week to $61.47. Why is that? Well, there actually is a gameplay reason behind this. Legacy on Magic Online this week, there was a Stifle Knot deck that put up some good results, and you see more people playing that deck now. Considering that this is a pretty hard card to find to begin with, once people took notice of this, I do think this was mostly a natural buyout. However, it could be a little bit of speculation too. If there was a speculator that saw the deck was doing well, they might have tried to grab this because this is a reserve list card. Now, even though it is on the reserve list, this is one of those cards that did get a reprinting as a judge promo and foil before they close that loophole on the list. Here's Plateau from Unlimited. It goes up $50 to $500 this week, of course, on the reserve list as well, but it did get a reprinting and revised after this. Exact same thing here with Taiga from Unlimited. It goes up $56.76 to $360.25. And then Volcanic Island revised goes up $15.35 to $488.55. Unlimited goes up $99.26 to an even cool $1,000. Okay, let's move on to our Commander Spotlight. And I'm going to go kind of quick here. We always get a lot of cards in this section, so I'll give you the main reason or main couple reasons why the card's going up in value, but I'll try to be as brief as possible. Una, Queen of the Fae, up at dollar 2 to 1324. This is a Shadowmoor card. And of course, it is a fairy. So these new fairies coming from Throne of Eldraine, including the one from the Brawl deck, Alila Artful Provocateur, have players thinking about fairy commander builds. Training Grounds back again up at dollar 09 to twenty one ninety nine. This is a popular commander card because it fits into a lot of different decks. For a while, it was popular because of the Modern Horizon slivers. Then it became popular again because of the Faceless Menace Commander twenty nineteen Morph deck. 
Now it's popular again because of the buy box promo from Throne of Eldraine. That's Kenrith, the Return King, going to play very well with Training Grounds. Sword of Fire Nice Ice goes up $1.17 to $107.80. This is the one from Modern Masters. And this is a solid commander card, but again, the real reason for the movement is Stoneforge Mystic, like we talked about earlier. You'll find this in a number of modern decks right now. I've seen it in Orzhov Smallpox, Devoted Devastation, Selesnya Eldrazi, Orzhov Stoneblade. Azoria Spirit decks, running Stoneforge packages, and more. This also sees Legacy playing Maverick, Death and Taxes. Really sought after card right now. Blood Clock. This goes up $1.30 to six sixty seven. This was on our list last week, too. It's slowing down a little bit, but still going up. This is going to play very well with the Adventure cards from Throne of Eldraine, because if you play the Adventure, then you play the Creature, bounce it back to your hand, play the Adventure, and then the Creature again, there's just tons of value to be had from that. Also, maybe to a lesser degree, there are people trying to build commander decks around some of those new Brawl commanders, and one that does play well with this is Chulain Teller of Tales. Next, we have Necropotence. Now, over the last couple weeks, every copy of this card has been going up. This week is just two that are still moving at a significant clip. Ice Age up $1.22 to $13.98. That one was kind of lagging behind a little bit. And Eternal Masters up $1.35 to $16.87. This is a great card for Carrick, Son of Yawgmoth builds. Also not bad with Nightmare and Making, which is a card from Merciless Rage. Piracy up $1.57 to $18.04. Not really a good commander card here, but it's a hard-to-find Portal Second Age card, and it's just kind of weird, so people like it. And if you're wondering, like, what do I do with this thing? It's a sorcery speed card that says, this turn you may tap your opponent's lands to help pay for your spells. But clearly, they could just tap their lands in response to this. Yeah, it doesn't really do a whole lot. The best thing you could do with this card is try to force them to tap out so you don't get surprised by a counterspell or a combat trick. But if they have mana rocks or mana dorks or other sources of mana, it's still not that good. But I have seen people just throw these for fun in pirate-themed commander decks. Sword of Feast and Famine up $1.58 to sixty-seven seventeen. This is the one from Mirrored and Besieged. And like I said earlier, when it comes to modern, maybe not as much play with Stoneforge Mystic as Sword of Fire and Ice or Batterskull. But it's seeing a little bit of play. I would say this is probably coming in third from what I've seen so far. I've seen it in like Azorius Control decks with Stoneforge packages, Slesnia Aldrazi, and others. Sometimes this even sees a little legacy play too in Azorius Stoneblade. But ultimately, yes, this is a great commander card. Been very popular for a while. Maze of Ith, the original one from the Dark, goes up $1.64 to $29.99. Mostly moving because it's an old magic card. Again, probably hard to find in good condition nowadays but it is also a very highly played Commander card. Edric's Spy Master of Trest, a couple copies going up this week, Commander 2016 up $1.18 to 284 Conspiracy up 213 to 379 The Commander copy went up a little bit too, but didn't quite make it enough for me to put on the list today. So why is this one moving? Well, it does see a little vintage play. It's a very strong Commander card, but there was a preview card from Throne of Eldraine that got people thinking about it, and that is Robber of the Rich. Remember, Edric is a rogue, so because of that, these two cards could be interesting together. Devastation from Portal goes up 215 to 2613. Again, we have an older card here that's just kind of hard to find in good condition. That's mostly why it's moving. It does play well, though, with a card from Commander 2019, Gerard Weatherlight Hero from the Mystic Intellect deck. If you use this when Gerard's in play, your creatures will come back, nobody else's creatures will come back, and nobody will have lands. Doesn't feel that bad to me. Bloom Tender, yet another card from that time period of magic. This one goes up 238 to 4999. Now, this is a classic commander card. It's fantastic. It's yet to see a reprint. But they actually showed us a preview card yesterday, which is kind of similar to this card. It's called Favor O Elder. So it has that same tap ability on it, but it's just a little more expensive, costing an additional white. But it has vigilance and more board presence behind it, too. Mana Crypt, Eternal Master is up 280 to 20945. The original media book promo is up 403 to 24973. Been a few weeks since we saw this on the list, but it's a great commander card, great vintage card too. And the reason I think it's getting a little push this week is because of a card we talked about earlier, Emery Lurker of the Lock. Okay, on to the Popper Spotlight. Stonehorn Dignitary. This goes up 12 cents to 70 cents. Second week in a row this has been on the list. You're going to find this in Popper Tron builds and more in the format. Arkham's Astrolabe. Okay, this goes up 18 cents to $1.31. So sure, this sees modern play in Urzithopter Sword, which is probably a big reason it's moving up this week. It's only 18 cents, not moving a ton. 
but that does feel like a lot for a common from a set that is still being open right now. Let's talk about Popper though. This card is everywhere right now in Popper. Scred, Tron, Snow Hexproof, and many, many other decks. I'm pretty confident that this card is most likely going to be banned in the Popper format. It's just too abundant right now, and it's really starting to shift the entire landscape towards Snow. Speaking of Snow, the partner in crime for that previous card, this is Scred. It goes up 24 cents to 467, another card that does see some modern play too, but this is seeing a ton of Popper play right now. Chromatic Star continues to rise. Time Spiral goes up 34 cents to 6.48. 10th Edition goes up 40 cents to 7.55. Another card that actually sees a lot of modern play. You'll find this in Urzathopter Sword again, as well as Tron builds. But in Popper, this is in Affinity, Tron, and more. Drefna's Restoration from Antiquities goes up $3 to $4.25. I could have put this one under the Commander section. I was kind of debating where it should fall because I do think it is a combination of both Popper and Commander moving this. Maybe more so Commander. But occasionally this is in those Popper Disciple of the Vault decks. You don't see them as much right now because everything has shifted so much towards Snow. But it is a deck that occasionally does show up and can still do well. Now in Commander, there's been such an artifact focus recently and that focus increased this week because of Emery Lurker of the Lock. That I think is the main reason this is jumping as much as it is. Time for the premium spotlight, let me give my weekly disclaimer. I don't like to talk too much about rare cards, promo cards, foil cards that are hard to find and such, because you can't get good online data. There's a lot of market manipulation around the cards, or just bad data that doesn't really tell you what's going on. But, every week I try to pick at least one card that feels like it is moving naturally with the market. This week it's Pillar of the Peroons. This is the foil copy from Dissension. It goes up 33 44 to $79.99. And like I said earlier, this is moving because of Rainbow Niv Mizzet this week. That concludes the Market Watch for today. Tomorrow I'll do a short video recapping any of the Throne of Eldraine previews from the weekend, assuming there's enough of them that matter. I saw one came out today. I'm assuming maybe one or two more will, but I don't expect a whole bunch of cards this weekend. Starting on Monday, the previews start again in full swing. We will do daily videos to recap what comes out until they, of course, spoil the whole set. Next Saturday, we'll be back here doing the Market Watch again. Until next time, though, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page, as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.